Hi, welcome to 4IR South Africa podcast with myself, your host, Ndogo Zontembo. Everybody calls me TJ. You'll find out the story about why as we go along with these shows. But I'm not alone. I'm with my co-host, Raneo. Introduce yourself. What's up? All right, how are you, my good friend? I'm good, but now you're good. Good, I know I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm yeah. just excited to... We're here. We're here. We're finally we are, doing it, we, recording our first episode. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed. But even more important, to send out what we've been wishing and willing. Come on. Uh, to send out. Yeah, and, and what's that specific? Now that, now that you... Before we even started, you just yeah. went yeah. into, you into know, action mode. You know, I don't what get are we invited. trying to do here, by now? No, look, I mean... I mean um, the fourth industrial revolution Come on. is 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 today's topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, it is today's topic because it is a sign of new social order to come. Mm. First and outright, a new social order on a massive scale, on globally, a, actually. Yes, yes, yes. So, so as South Africa, um, we are only one of those countries that have to seemingly now respond to this global phenomenon. Okay. Yeah. I would admit admit that. Uh, it's unfortunate for us that uh, it is new news. Yeah. But for the leading pack of countries that have really understood and driven this fourth industrial revolution. Yes. yes. Because remember, um, this is a an industrial revolution. Come on. So, so it talks to the economy basically. Indeed. Which is which indeed is one of the things there. that for South Africa right now, it's the thing. Our economy needs help. It needs someone to come and rescue it. Yeah, and 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 this fourth industrial revolution. Come on, if 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 properly treated and understood, yeah, uh, it tends to even the revolutionize the South African economy. So it comes as you know um, the 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 application of new technologies mm. to almost every aspect of life basically you know basically and of course i would always want to say it's nothing new mm. what we're dealing with now as we even now have coined it fourth industrial revolution yeah we have been dealing with it since the days of globalization yeah. when when the the term globalization yeah came to be of course at the time it was just explaining the connections sure you know but the connections at a at a medium scale, if you want, mm. uh, people were now able to uh, connect easier. Uh, for example, a DSTV multi choice. Yes. When South Africa started bringing um, a, a digital satellite technology, yeah. The, then it was a connection towards the world beyond SABC. So so so, so what you see then is globalization has been happening. Globalization has been happening. The point is that this technology now advanced yeah. so much from a software and hardware perspective. Mm. Apple phone, you know, a phone that is done in in a specific way. Yeah, to, and has a lot of capability and a lot of capacity. Of course, and of the course. other technologies surrounding that of as course. well. So, that so they've reached a point now where they play a massive role in the way we live how we live and how and, and some of the things that we do like how we work yeah in fact more important how we work and oh, how it is aiming to change and how yes listen like in case you're wondering yeah. we're getting to the unemployment situation now because yes. that's why r is definitely going to have an effect on that yes. good or bad yes now now as we do what we do yeah our intention with this uh, podcast yes and uh, some of the other text-based yes. uh, 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 products that we will be giving through our like website. our blog, for example. Yes, the the idea is for once to demystify, mm. because whether or not your ordinary citizen, your ordinary listener of the podcast yes. understands it, this is a discussion that is happening. At a level higher than them, mm. this is a discussion but that it has implications on them. It has implications on them, as the bank staff have recently Ooh. have recently saw it. A lot of tensions went up right there. Yes, and in fact, had it not been that uh, um, the the unions that were active in the sector said no, we will shut down the bank 
industry. In fact, I'll tell you that uh, when uh, the, the South African and, and, and European Union yes. uh, 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 partners were discussing this thing, yeah. you know, uh, trying to frame the thinking for South Africa on how to respond to this thing that has already happened in Europe, for example, the, the problem with Uber mm. did not start here. It so they have already Europe. experienced it. Exactly because now, for exactly example, you're talk, for, for example, you're talking about what nearly happened in the banking sector. And, you know, one of the most profound things is that with situations like these, with trends like these, where something starts somewhere else and then it starts to have an impact on the country, a lot of people react after the fact. They don't see it coming. And I think it's it's worth noting here that one of the things that we're trying to do is to bring people to that point where they realize that wait a minute this fourth industrial revolution is not just a, a, a whole new host of toys that i can play with but rather it has implications on my my my, my career it has implications on my children's mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i need to mm -hmm. position myself mm -hmm. accordingly i can't just continue one way and yet there's information that's saying maybe this is going to change at some point so that's what we're trying to deal with in here. fact lack of awareness yes in fact in fact i like how you put it because for once uh and and i speak as somebody whose background has been in government for a long time yes yes um, 10 years old uh and and having traveled and it's going to be and, interesting and, and, in the following podcast yeah, when you tell us about your experience yeah yes. and, and in, in 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 the point being that uh, i have seen the disconnect in how government flows its agenda. Yes. Public engagement uh, at, 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 at a, an effective level has not really happened. Okay. And that, is why, that. that is why you see, um, maybe let me put it like this. This is a state, okay. you know, a government led by uh, South Africa. A government that comes from a space where the social order was such that there are those who were not even going to be told if there was a tsunami tomorrow mm. uh, because they did not matter as citizens. But now you you have a new government who, as part of its duty since mm. its inception, yes. was democratization, and democratization comes with sharing information mm, engaging uh, with the public. engaging with the public as opposed that, to just dictating to them what ought to happen indeed so so unfortunately i'm reflecting this point here because i see that what we are even trying to do here with this podcast is essentially to bridge that gap that is there and that is real mm. but we're bridging it now because if there was ever an important time it's, it's now. now it's now especially we see what's yes. happening and yes. with with yes. the example that you made yes. with the banking sector that it's yes. no longer an abstract thing now no, we can no. see the impact that wait yes. a minute yes. technology is yes. here yes. and it yes. could potentially supplant a lot of jobs and we already have a problem with unemployment and in fact i will add on to that before i get to this point on yeah time, and maybe just to close the point on what we are doing yes right yes um is that this paternalism, if you know what I mean, this uh, 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 dependency on what government is saying. Mm. Government is leading the vision of society. Yes. And all citizens are recipients mm. of whatever reality that is created. Okay. In fact, if you, if you, you see the service delivery protests, mm. 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 Uh, and I say this with authority because I've worked in a, in a department there where I dealt with a, a local government. Okay. So municipal governance, um, one of the key reasons why they even uh, uh, created what they call the back to basics okay. strategy. Yes. One of the key things that w there was an attempt to address was this uh, deficit of trust between the public and government. Which is exactly, which what, exactly what's leading to the frustration now that there's no lack of trust between the citizen and the government. Now, look at it this way. Had it been that, banking sector people were informed mm. of these changes. The ones that have just lost their jobs. Yes. Um, and you know, losing a job in a context of 
uh, an almost impossibility to get it in a, 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 at the rate of speed that would be um, helpful. Okay. It's like throwing somebody <laughs> at the deepest end and hoping yeah. them to come out in a Somehow. day. In a day. Because in three because, hours. Because yeah. the issue is that now that, that, that person's capacity, it's not that the business is downscaling because we yes, have financial yes, issues. Yes. No, it's just that now there's a machine that will basically make that person useless even in future, it necessitating that person to reskill themselves exactly. because it's exactly. not like that job is going to exactly. open up again. And now, here's another point. Uh, even businesses, they experience it the same Yes, day. because if they don't apply um, new technologies to streamline the activities, look at Holland. I'll make an example about Holland. Okay. All these companies that are now buying into app technology. Yes. Why are they buying into app technology? Mm. All right, because they are seeing its benefits. You understand? So they're seeing where it can take them as a business. As a business, it is not just that because the banks, the banks are are, are using uh, digital technology mm. to transact now. You know, Holland as an insurer. Mm. can't do the same so your point being that if businesses are seeing a need to to incorporate the advancements into how they do business are you trying to say the individual needs to do the same to realize that i need to upgrade how i do things in order to keep up no what what i'm saying here is even businesses are impacted okay because this 4ir may either you know uh kill you off yes. as a business yes. because you, the comp competitor mm. is using much more less costly systems to do the same job as you are doing. I get you. If you've got Holland and you've got another one insurer there and then the other insurer doesn't have an app. Mm. The very fact that, you know, Holland has got convenient, a convenient way. That and is why FNB, convenience yeah, that is why you see FNB has taken uh the award for the most the best bank yeah because of yeah. how they're using technology to make life more convenient yeah, for, their for customer. their customers yeah so so it is serious it's not just for the individual the individual's uh interface here mm. is i can lose a job i can be redundant now that's an interesting point that you're bringing here of of how businesses are using technology to make the user experience more comfortable. Now, that in the case of FNB, for example, that's a good point because they've got the money to actually do that, of course. to actually make that change. Mm. I think one of the things that we, we, we will be attempting to address here is that what happens to the small business owner who's just started yesterday with little or no capital at all, that, all right, I want to break into that industry, but the trends are moving in that way so much so that I'm not sure how to respond. So we're trying to also address that. Yes, yes, of because the, 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 the average business mm. SMME would not have the capability to just source that technology yes, and mass yes. at one go. Yes. But what it would also do, it will create a point where even the shape of business competitiveness mm would be defined by the amount of technology you use. All right. So if you don't have the money for that technology, mm. uh, you won't have quicker access. By the way, the 4IR, it is driven by that rapid. Rapid technological advancement. Exactly. You know, it's something unrelenting because the scope of making these technologies is so huge and limitless. You understand? Gotcha. It's just, what do you need? If tomorrow, the reason why you even have artificial intelligence where it is it is it is that that realization that it is a, a limitless you know yeah if if you want to have robots that can that can build houses mm. for god's sake now what happens to the construction industry and all the people that it employs so 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 those are the business uh, kind of uh, uh, considerations yes. but but to close off on the point i wanted to make about what we are doing what we are doing here is to try and one first uh, conscientize mm. that if there's ever a time for one individual yes. or business yes. uh, to participate in an unfolding reality on their 
on their lives. Yes, is now. Yeah? But what we are doing, uh, we are trying to make them find their future in there. Come on, you know. But even more so, we are trying to give them scope mm. and try and um, disseminate information faster. It is the information that we have collated for their convenience, mm. uh, so that they don't get left out. So that they are also aware of the opportunities. For example, if someone knows that uh, there has been, uh, let me use an IT expert mm. or an IT technician or an IT somebody in the IT industry, yes, yes. who, well, for all intents and reasons, know that uh, they would, you know, supposedly as they are standing now, the, their jobs are are safe. Mm. But you see, an IT person. Unless, you know, the company cannot buy robotics that can fix the hardware okay. of computers. Yes. Or that cannot install those computers. Are you trying to say they are safe only in, only in that scenario? Only in that scenario. Even not so safe. Because computers, there would be computers made which actually are there, a mainframe that controls, mm. you know, almost like an administrator of all the other computers, all now, right? Now, so so yes. you, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need an IT technician yes. if you have a built-in system that plays out scenarios. Mm. Uh, when the system is down, it is because of reason one, two, three, and in that regard, go to three, go to four, go to seven, which is that coding thing they're talking about. Yes. You understand? Yes. So it will self-manage and you will not have a reason to have a IT technician. So what I'm saying is we prepare that technician. Yes. Because over time and, 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 and by the understanding of social order of South Africa, yes. uh, he may not have the interest at that level. He may not because South African citizens, mm. to be blunt, that's why there's always been a, a, an invitation for them to be participative in the politics. Uh, there's a call for them to not be apathetic. There's a call for them um, to have some consciousness, consciousness about what's happening in their country. Uh, uh, you know, I always hate when there's fashionable uh, new ways, such, such as at the time, active citizenship. Mm. When the government knows that, it cannot invite people to be um, confrontational to it. It has to be a government that's responsible enough to work with the people. Right. So, so, so what we are seeing is that in mass as it is the case now even with this fourth, fourth industrial revolution, uh, information and discussions. People, these are running as an elitist, um, you know, discussion, an, an elitist topic. That's why, even if they've mixed their and their social partners and whatsoever, whatsoever again, they have cherry-picked, you know, uh, people to be the thinkers in that uh, presidential uh, steering committee on 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 or council or committee on on the fourth industrial revolution. These people that thirty people that they have chosen uh, to give us the millions, yeah, a perspective on how they think we can make things, we can survive this 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 change. Perhaps when you're talking about perspective, let's first let's also clarify that you know, in as much as we're citing all of the what's normally called externalities, you know, mm, yes, of yes, the fourth industrial revolution, as with other in, uh, revolutions that have mm. gone before it, it has tendencies of one, two, three. Mm. One of the most uh, profound ones uh, that we've already cited is the issue of now removing people out of their jobs mm. because machines mm. uh, computers can do it better mm. that let's clarify that now that we're not saying we are against 
the fourth industrial no, revolution and the trends, but rather what are we saying about the fourth industrial revolution first to government and to the to, to, to the private sector and to someone who who works in either or even wants to start a business. I had a discussion with you earlier, uh, a talk, yes, and said there are a lot of people that have seen the value of discussions about this thing. Come on. Uh, you know, you've got the, the fourth industrial revolution uh, grouping that is universities called for Risa. Yes. Uh, and lots of other uh, interest groups. All right. But the point is they felt the pulse first and said that it's something's like, happening. Yeah. If, 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 if I know you are, you are a fan of uh, sci-fi movies like me. Oh, yes. Mm, oh. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Don't even start. Don't even start. Yeah. If you know Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck, uh, there was a movie here, which uh, I just, I'm trying to remember mm. uh, the title where there was a, a what they call a in science okay a, a meteor mm. that was so big oh, and, was, and uh, then they had to go up in space and blow it up yes yes mm, I uh, the name of the movie, movie as well now. that movie yes. so so the four ir is something like that mm. whether you like it or not something there coming. is there is a uh, there, there is that uh, meteor that's, that's heading already, towards us and potentially already, you the listener as well that, yes that's already uh hitting earth you know called the fourth industrial revolution so it's not neither a point of you want to attend to it or you you don't want to attend to it you don't have a choice but you have to face it. That's a very powerful statement because you know in the blog that uh that that we released and we'll release details of where you can find our blogs and connect with us on social media. But one of the most powerful statements that was ever made that I also referenced there is that the question is not if uh, is not the question is not will disruption come to my industry, mm -hmm. but when will disruption come to my industry? Yeah, indeed, indeed. But but look, I mean, the the, the point is that we would like this space to be you know, a space of questions yes. from um, our listeners. We'd like to hear their perspective and their views. And the experiences as and well. And the experiences as well. And I'm sure there are those that... And the possible solutions that they've thought of. Because you might find and that even the, the greatest thinkers of 4IR yes. are, are actually in the country, not in government. And, but and they need to actually be in a space where they can exercise those solutions. In, in fact, you hit it on the name. Because that's why this portal, yes. this podcast yes. is being established. So that for once, we don't... Uh, react to government direction mm. but we find our space in this reality Fantastic. Now, you know Fantastic. so but remember the the problem with south african citizens as i had reflected it is not just simply the apathy but that a culture of participation in mm. democracy was not built yeah you know the only uh, participation that our politicians seek is at the elections time mm. uh, at the at the ballot but let me tell you, the grand societies of our time, you can do this research, mm. you know, and our listeners can just, just, just check that around. Yes. That the most advanced and successful societies uh, have had an element of a strong public engagement, a strong public participation in the affairs of government. The individual doesn't actually even need to go research it because you look at, for example, we also had this conversation where we were talking about how you look at our democracy. Our democracy didn't just fall from the sky. Not Every indeed. citizen no. got involved no. with the injustice that they saw. Yes. And as a result, yes. some of us had to die for that. Mm. Some of us had to spend mm. time in prison mm. for fighting an oppressive system. Mm. So in essence, this is actually what's happening now where the individual needs to get involved uh, for their own sake because it's no longer now yes. something that's yes. outside yes. you, but yes. something that affects you yes. as a citizen, not only of the country, but of the world entirely. No, thank you for putting that that way mm. because it will answer this, this question that we're asking ourselves. 
uh, having noted that we need to participate yes and and we we, we took the initiative uh, to collect an understanding and to disseminate it down yes we were possessed with one question here yes. so why is south africa responding to the four Yes, and that's the title of your blog, and I think we'll get into it in our second episode, but yeah. just unpack yeah. the introduction to it, and then we'll dig in on the next episode. Yeah. Well, 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 well the reason why we're disconnected yes. to this thing in the first instance as, 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 as citizens and why we need to close that gap mm. really is because we, we come from a history of oppression. Okay. One. But more specifically, we come from a history of administrative states. All right. Tell us more about now, what you mean by that. Now, an apartheid state was a very administrative state. Okay. At the top there is government and all the people that have been chosen to govern. All right. And the rest are all that are recipients mm. of governance, of services that government should give. Come on. Now, those governments, that kind of government, the party government, uh, was highly authoritative, highly, um, had a very high value of social management, even worse so at the level of uh, the Bantu population. As they Almost as if they were dictating. No, what, of course. Yes. Of course, it was a very dictatorial uh, uh, arrangement. System, yes. yes, that's why. That's why the position of black people, of African people in South Africa was, was, was as it was. Because here you were dealing with a highly administrative, highly violent state mm. that was driven by a, a value system which obviously sought to, uh, to turn others into laborers and others into recipients of the benefits of others' labor. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, fast forward post-1994. So the vision of that society of apartheid, as I've just said it, others will be laborers, others will be enjoying, and others will be uh, owners, and others will be uh, beggars, and others will be borrowers, and others will be lenders. Interesting how we, it's almost as if we've inherited that, that dysfunctional system even now. Indeed, indeed, that is the point. It, it is, it, in fact, what we had to end up doing um, is to manage this, the, the, the skeleton of that apartheid system. Yeah. Today you still have the, 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 the structure of the apartheid government systems still working. You know, which would parliament as it were the dysfunction that we're seeing right yeah, now. Parliament as it were, but, but the, 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 the dysfunction really uh, is in, in leadership, okay. okay? There, the structure and the functioning of that, that society, whoever had the, the, the perspective that the society must look like this for them, was successful. Mm. Because today, it actually did what that system sought out to do. Mm. Have mm. those that are laborers, laborers still today. Yeah. Have those still that are begging. Today. Yes. Those that are borrowers are still borrowers today. And drowning in debt. And drowning in debt. And those that are, 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 are lenders are even having much more strength in the past 20 years to be lenders. Children of rents are being reported that, uh, that have been you know, stolen. Business. Stolen is what? Before we get to this group, you yes. stolen. Yes. But that those that gained out of this transition, from apartheid to the new government, uh, to a democratic state, they have, you know, uh, tripled some of the <coughs> capital yeah, in their banks. Their net worth. Yeah. Yeah, their net worth, you understand. And they say collectively, you know, they count trillions of rands of that uh, liquidity mm -hmm. that is sitting in banks, just counting the local uh, business. Uh, 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 councils or what you want to say, companies, yes. you know, their net worth combined that they are holding <coughs> in banks that they should in, be, 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 be investing yeah. back. It's about uh, trillions of rents. Now, you ask, 
You know, why, why do we get to that point? But even more so, why do we end up now um, finding ourselves on the back foot of this meteor that's coming our way? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, the apartheid government, um, you know, it met certain criteria for what we call a developmental state. Mm. So, it was taking deliberate action to create industries that will help their society as they looked at it. They, uh, they drove innovation. You know, they still are the best. You know, they have one of the best bots or best... So, uh, was it best so, so they were progressive, basically. Yeah. No, they were developmental. They were developmental. Yes, so they had a vision of development, which is really... The, the, how do they improve the quality of the life of their citizens? How do they believe? So there was a vision for the future there. Of course. All in terms of purposes. That's where we start. That's where all this thing starts. Then perhaps that's, that's, that's what, and as we get to the close of this uh, 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 first episode, perhaps that's the one thing that South Africa needs. To have a vision for the future and then have a strategy on how to actually bring that, 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 prediction, that desire into, into, into fruition. No, I can tell you that that is there. Yeah. But the question is the quality of it. Mm. Because the quality of it is why we find ourselves in this situation. In the situation that yes, the quality of it was such that it did not focus on being sensitive to the global changes, <coughs> especially in industry. That, well, let us say that the people in government, you see this notion of government being there and the, and, and, and the private sector being there. Yeah, that's, that that's, relationship yeah. cannot improve an economy. In fact, uh, there is a book by uh, Meredith Wu Cummings. Okay. It's called The Developmental State. Mm. And it has a set of people who have written in there, like mm. Chalmers Johnson. Mm. But what it is, is an expression of the key components that need to be a play. That the non-negotiables that needs to be satisfied. One of them is nationalism. Yeah. That, why do you see the Chinese so as they are today? Yes. Nationalism. Mm. They, they... They were united under a common vision. A common vision. And yes. that and that and that and that same spirit is exactly what liberated South Africa, united under a common vision that we want and freedom. Unfortunately, that common vision. That's why I said the quality, mm. because that common vision was pretty much at addressing a social, attempting. Yes, and yes. it's still a project because people are killing each other here. People are calling every time they get a chance on Twitter. Three people already, three white people, yes, have gotten under the smoke for racist rants on Twitter. Mm. So there's so, social dis there's, 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 a, there's a disconnect in our society. There's still the, a, a social as opposed to the unity that we need at this point in time. Yes, but what's even worse is that in terms of the the the, the non negotiables. Yes. Uh, um, you have all the countries that have succeeded, like Japan. Hmm? Uh, not only did they have a vision, but they had the discipline. Mm. They had a state that ensured that it had good relations right. with business, sure. but not parasitical relations that yeah. we are seeing here. But mutually so, beneficial relationships. Indeed, because any smart business businessman knows yeah. that you can have bricks and mortar um, in a particular community yes. and open a shop. What's going to sell your business is not what's in there only. Exactly. It's going to be how you relate with the community. That's fantastic. You understand? That's fantastic. Yes. Look, uh, uh, for today, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting how just with the introduction of what we are attempting to do, we've unpacked so much. And, you know, to us, uh, uh, from us, 
to the viewer. This is one of the things that we hope we will foster, the conversations that will unpack these issues because obviously with everything that we've discussed now, it's clear that there's a lot at play here that we need to be observant on. I want to thank all our viewers for listening in for today and you catch our next podcast. I will definitely include at the end of this uh, podcast all the details of where you can find our blog and we'll be discussing the blog actually uh, in the next episode where you can uh, communicate with us and everything else that goes with it. But thank you for joining us for today. This is 4IR South Africa. Peace out. Shop shop. Welcome to 4IR South Africa podcast with myself, your host, Ndogo Zontembo. Everybody calls me TJ. You'll find out the story about why as we go along with these shows. But I'm not alone. I'm with my co-host, Ranel. Introduce yourself. What's up? All right. How are you, my good friend? I'm good, Ranel. Yeah, you're good? Good. I know I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm yeah. just excited to... We're here. We're here. We're finally we're, doing it. We're recording we're... our first episode. Yeah, I'm not 